The first remark is this can be used. So it can be used uh, used to solve uh, linear, non-homogeneous linear DEs. So non, same thing we've been doing. Non-homogeneous linear DEs with constant coefficients. I'll write it out completely with constant coefficients, co, uh, big words, coefficients, words have to be so big, where the right hand side is, so it can be used to solve the same thing we've been doing, right, non-homogeneous linear to ease with constant coefficients, where the right hand side is uh, anything, in theory, like, you know, anything that makes sense. So no restrictions. You can have anything. You have ln x there. You can have secant x. You can have cosinch. Well, we could have done cosinch in the last section. Um, anything. Anything you want. Uh, so you can do it for anything. So you might, you, might, you might be wondering, why did we even do the previous section? Like, well, <laughs> why did you use this? Right? Why not skip it? I mean, I'm all for that. I mean, you know, why, why, why learn the other way? It's because, uh, go ahead. What do you think? It's yeah, it's harder. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this requires integration. So, you know, integration is really hard compared to differentiation. So, that's why. So, on your test, I will tell you to use this method. It will say, use variation of parameters. It'll be the last question on your test, the very last one. And just one of these, okay? Just one. Uh, I, I think two is too much. So, uh, the second remark. <sighs> uh, be careful. That's the second remark. So, <laughs> so, be careful. That's the second remark. Just take your time, right? Take your time. Uh, go, go slow. It says, this is a long method, and I scratched it out, and it says, be careful. Yeah, so, 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 be, so it's also a long method, so be careful. All right, let me give you the steps, like step one, step two, step three, step four, and then we'll do a problem. So steps. Steps. So the first step is to put it into standard form, okay? So this is really important for the homework, for the last one in the homework, put in standard form. I'll explain what this means. Um, on your test, it will be in standard form for you, uh, for sure. I'm not gonna give you one not in standard form. Why? Because if you don't do this, the whole thing is wrong, and I, I wouldn't know what to do. Like, I don't know how many points to take off. It just ruins everything. So here's an example. Say you have four y double prime plus y prime plus y equals, um, I, don't, I don't know, cosinch x. So that's not in standard form. So to put it in standard form, we have to get rid of the 4. So divide by 4, divide by 4, divide by 4. So the, the highest uh, derivative has to be no coefficient? Yeah, just a, just a 1 coefficient. Yep, good. So in, turn, in, turn, in front of the y prime, you just have to have uh, a 1. I'm writing so small, wow. So, so that's standard form. So this, is, this would be standard form. So just make sure there's a 1 there. On your test, that will be the case. Don't worry. Um, if you look at my notes, if you look at the last one of my notes, I did it wrong because I forgot to put it in standard form and another hour of my life or 30 minutes wasted. Um, so on the last one, make sure to put it in standard form. Okay, make sure to put it. It'll be done for you on the test. I'm not going to mess around with that. Two. Two. Um, the next step is to pretend it's equal to zero. So solve the associated homogeneous homogeneous equation. I was going to abbreviate it, but I just, you know. Solve the associated homogeneous equation um, to get yc. But I'm going to write down yc for you because we're going to need it. So yc will be c1y1 plus c2y2. So that's, that's really key. I'm going to put this in a box. So solve that. It's really important that you do this part right. This will uh, affect the rest of the question greatly if you mess up. Whereas in the previous section, if you mess this part up, I mean, it does affect it, but like, it doesn't cause a chain reaction. Be especially careful with repeated roots, uh, like if I was mentioning earlier especially in the next step. So do that. So pretend it's equal to zero and solve it. It's usually pretty easy. Usually pretty easy. Step two, uh, so step three, compute the W's. So the first one we compute is the Ronskian 
of y1 and y2. So here you have y1, here you have y2, here you have y1 prime, and here you have y2 prime. So that's, so compute the Ronskian of the y's. Now, you know, different people might have different y's. It'll still work out okay. Like maybe this is cosine for you and this is sine for your friend. It doesn't matter, you'll get the same answer at the end of the day. So the Ronskian of the y's. The next step is kind of reminiscent of Kramer's rule. So you have to compute w1 and w2. These are also determinants. And there's a memory trick, okay? So for, for, for w1, what you do is you cross out the first column of w and you replace it with zero and f of x. You might say, what's f of x? It's, f of x is this. That's your f of x. That's why if you don't divide by four, you'll get it wrong, because your f of x will be different. Okay, so whatever is there is your f of x. So for w1, you replace the first column, replace with zero and f of x. For w2, replace the second column and put zero and f of x. It's a really easy way to, to memorize it. Okay, so w1, replace the first column, w2, replace the second column. I forgot what the derivation of this was. I derived it once long ago. It's kind of messy. That's why I don't do it in class. Um, I, I think it's in the book. I don't remember. But So you replace the first column with zero f of x, replace the second column with, with zero f of x. So pretty easy to do. This is not hard. Most people make it this far. Most people, most people, yeah, most, most, most people get this far. Like you'll, you'll, sometimes people mess up here, it's really bad. Oh, and my comment about repeated roots. So like let's say that y, y2 is x e to the x. Just, just, just in case, right? What rule do you have to use to compute the derivative here? The product rule. So, so yeah, you gotta use the product rule here, right? So if, so if you get a repeated root, you will have to use the product rule. Sometimes people don't, and that's really bad because it ruins the whole question. Well, and, derivative? Yeah, because you gotta find the derivatives here. You see? Yeah, so sometimes people will be like, oh, 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 it's just e to the x. No, it's the derivative of the first times the second plus the first. So, so it's really important that you, that you don't mess that up because it completely, and it's more than a minus one if that happens. It can like, completely change the dynamic of the question. Four, because you might not get to the hard part, so I'll never know if you can do it. You know? Or you, you probably won't be able to finish. Four, this is the worst part. Compute the u's. So compute, that's a lot of steps. You're like, I'm never gonna remember this. You will. Once you do one of these, you'll never forget it. It's just so intense. So u1 is the integral of w1 over w. So you divide the determinants. So w1 over w. So this is, the integration gets pretty, pretty wicked on some of these. And then u2 is the integral of w2 over w. So that's the fourth, the fourth step. You can do this with three by threes as well. We're not doing it. Um, there was one in the homework long ago, and the first time I taught this class, I'm like, no, I deleted it, and I've never put it back. <laughs> so, like, I just, because then I got to do it in class, it takes like 45 minutes, and like, if there's only one in the homework, I'm not going to put it on the test, right? So, that's, don't worry about it. So, you want you to, and then that's, that's, this is, this is where the questions become easy or hard. These integrals can be pretty tough, right? So, five. There's only seven homework questions. Um, find yp. So yp is going to be u1 y1 plus u2 y2. So you multiply the u's times the y's from the beginning of the problem. You want to distribute stuff so and combine like terms, stuff like that, like distribute stuff. Like if you have like parentheses here, like distribute it all out. Take the time to do it. Box everything in. You know, as you're doing stuff, identify everything on the test. The more, the further you get in the problem, even if you don't finish, the more points you get, right? And you know, ideally, you'll finish and get it right. It's a pretty long problem. And then six, six is the final answer. It's y equals. What do you think it should be? What? Y c plus y b. Yeah, that's it. That's it. So that's a variation of parameters. So now we're going to do a problem. So, um, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a cool method. Uh, once you do it once, it's like you, you, it seems like a lot of steps, but like you won't forget it. It's, it's, and this is a pretty good memory trick, I think. For W1, replace the first column with zero f of x. W2, replace the second column with zero f of x. It reminds me of Kramer's rule. It's like you're replacing columns and stuff. Um, now the hard decision to make is which one to do in the homework. 
Uh, I want to do one that I, that I haven't done before recently or like well, I haven't made the test, right? I can do a really hard one. You can do a really easy one and that's the one that's going to be <laughs> the one we do the hard ones. <laughs> I think number five might be on the old test. Let me look at the old test. Yeah. Is it? It's, it's numbers are different. Yeah, so I mean it's a really hard one though. Maybe I should do it anyways. Uh, I think it's pretty tough. The one on your test should be easy. So let's, let's do number five, because I think number five is kind of, let's do five. Yeah, five might be the hardest one in the homework. So let's do it. So number, number. This is really long, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, this is really long. Mm -hmm. By the way, you all know cosinch and cinch and stuff like that, right? You know cosinch. Do you all know that stuff? If you don't, oh god, okay, so cosinch. <laughs> so, just, just, you have to know this stuff for the homework. It's in the homework. And then cinch. It might be. Yeah, there's some in the homework in this section. So cosinch is the average of e to the x and e to the negative 2x. And cinch is half the difference. It's really beautiful. I can go on about this. So what's the, what's the huh? No, I think the way that you said that is a better way to remember it. Yeah, you know where I got it from? Wikipedia. So yeah, cosinch is the average of e to the x and e to the negative x. And cinch is half the difference. Just because I have to show you, it'll only take five seconds, I promise. Look at this. This is really beautiful. e to the x looks like this, right? And e to the negative x looks like this. So this is saying add the y value for e to the x, add the y value for e to the negative x, and divide it by 2. So let's pick an x value here. So if you take this y value, and you take this y value, and you add them up and divide by 2, you get a point here. So take this y value, take this y value, add them up, you're up here, divide by 2, and you're here. So this distance plus this distance is this distance, divide it by 2, and you get this distance. And you keep doing that, and you get this beautiful hanging power line. That's what it's used to model, hanging power lines. That's why engineers use it. Also, it can be used to model spider webs. Yeah, like if you're going in your closet at night to look for bugs, and you see a spider web, the hyperbolic cosine can model that. And then cinch is different. Um, and the derivative of cosinch is cinch. The derivative of cinch is cosinch. Likewise for the integrals. Uh, what else do you need to know? I think that's good so enough. Why is the power line? Derivative of cosinch. Is cinch. Derivative of cinch is cosinch. No change. Because they're hanging the power line. So it's, it's like the, that it has nothing to do with sine and cosine, right? Uh, they are related by some identities. The complex ones are related. So like if you look at x as a complex number and you look at the complex sine and cosine, so there like is a relationship. No, they're different. Uh, yeah. It's just a totally, I should just think that totally. Yeah. Yeah. You know, how, you know how cosine and sine will give you the unit circle? Or give you, if you have a cosine and sine function as parametric equations, you'll get the unit circle. If you have these as parametric equations, they'll give you a hyperbola. That's why they're called hyperbolic functions. Okay, number five. So number five, maybe we'll, if we have time, we'll do one with one of these, but I don't know. It depends if you want to review. So number five. Y double prime plus, I already forgot, 3Y prime, thanks, plus 2Y. Awesome. And it will say to use variation of parameters. I think this is a really good example to do. <clears throat> oh, I wonder if this has that thing at the end. Oh, let me look. I hope it does. There's a, there's a, there's a tricky part at the end of the problem. I really hope this has it. It does. It does. Okay, it does. Good. Yeah, it's a seven. That's a seven. Yeah, I'll make it a tough seven. There we go. Now it's tough. All right, solution. <laughs> I knew this guy in the military once, and he always had his sevens like that. So, okay. So first thing. Yeah, I don't know. He was tough. So he was in the army. So this is m squared <laughs> plus 3m <laughs> plus 2 equals 0. That's the first step, right? Oh, I erased it, but that's the first step. <laughs> you do that first, right? So, and you find your y, your yc. Oh, this factors. m plus 1. I like variation of parameters. And then you have a product equal to 0, set each piece equal to 0, equal to zero. so you get two answers. You get negative 1 and negative 2. So we have two, two separate answers, negative 1 and, and negative 2. Okay. So that's going to give us two distinct real roots. Uh, it gives us two e's, I mean, because we have two distinct real roots. So y sub c is c1 e to the negative x plus c2 e to the negative 2x. Yeah, this stuff is really cool. Wish we had time to do like five of these. I mean, this is really fun. <clears throat> and then now, because we have to use these, the formulas, uh, it's, it's, 
I guess, I forgot what step two was, but, oh, put in standard form was step one. That was done. This is step two. Okay. So now we're gonna, I'm going to write down y1 and, y, and y2. So y1 is e to the negative x. y2 is e to the negative 2x. I'm doing that because we have to compute the w's next. So basically, you make sure there's a 1 here. There will be in every single problem except the last one in the homework. Um, you do this, you get this, and then you have to focus on, on getting this. So now you just take derivatives. So when you take the derivative of e to the negative x, what are you going to get out front? Negative. Yeah, negative 1. Be really careful. Take your time. This will be the very last question on your test, always. I, I put it at the end because I feel like, I don't know. Yeah, that's y prime. Good, Anna. Mm -hmm. Yep. No, 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 it's good. No, it's good. You sure? No, it's good. It's good. No shame. No, Anna. It's good. It's good. Oh, right. So it shouldn't count. Oh, triple points. I'm kidding. Okay, so the y2 <laughs> prime. What prime? <laughs> negative 2 e to the negative. Thank you, Anna. No, it's good. It's important. I, ma I, make, that, I make that mistake every semester, probably, with the primes. It's, it's, it's bound to happen. It's bound to happen. Yeah. Yeah. You probably missed some of them already. Yeah, there's mistakes in my notes and stuff. Okay. So now we can compute the W's. Okay. So the first W is, the, is just the Ronskian and V. That's why we needed this for the Ronskian. So W is the determinant of this and this. So we have e to the negative x, e to the negative 2x. And then we have this and this. So negative e to the negative x, negative 2 e to the negative 2x. So we have that. That's our w. And then you do this times this minus this times this. Right? That's the rule. So when you multiply these, you add the exponents. So it's going to be negative 2 e to the negative 3x. Mm -hmm. And then minus this times this. That's going to be plus, yeah, it's going to be plus, plus e to the negative 3x. I zoned out. Thank you. Yeah, the, these. Yeah, I was thinking about something else. So this is equal to negative e to the negative. I was thinking, like, if we don't get to review the, the worksheet, I have a video, and I'll show you where it is, and it has all the solutions to the worksheet. And I'll post the one from last time, assuming it turned out okay, but I'll post it anyways. So. But I do have one already that shows, you know, that worksheet we did? Because that's on your test, that worksheet. worksheet. The worksheet from last time, remember last time? So it's going to be a part that's just going to be the substitutions? Yeah, just the form of YP. Remember what we did last time with the form of YP? Yeah, you'll have a question like that. So. Like the initial and something else thing? Initial and yeah, yeah, I have a video of that. So I know, I know it's hard, right? I know. So, so if we don't get to review, we, we might get to review it. We might, we might. We might. We go on this cross. Believe. Now we got to do W1. So W1. So we replace the first column with 0 f of x. So this beautiful thing is our f of x. Right? So it's 0 and this. So it's. No, it's not that bad. It gets worse. It's a 7. Let's see. It's sorry. It does get worse. So replace the first column. And then you have, it's good though, it's good. This is a good problem. I picked this one because this one has the hardest integral in the homework. <laughs> yeah, it has the hardest integral. This, this problem has an integral that, even if you got an A in Calc 2, you might not know how to do it. You'd be like, what? <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> you're like, what's going on? <laughs> so, so this times this is 0 minus this times this. So it'd be 0 minus e to the negative 2x over 7 plus e to the x. Yeah. So I'm going to write it again. W1, I'm going to put it in a box, is negative e to the negative 2x over 7 plus e to the x. And I'll put that in a beautiful box. There we go. Good stuff. Did I do that right? Yeah, I think so. This times this is 0 minus this times this. Any questions so far? Any questions on any of the steps? OK. All right. Let's, now we have to find W2. So let's see what happens there. So W2 is the same, except we replace the second column. So, so W2, so we keep the first column. 
So e to the negative x, negative e to the negative x, and we replace the second column. So 0 and f of x. 0 and then 1 over 7 plus e to the x. And then same thing, this times this minus this times this. This times this is just going to give us e to the negative x over 7 plus e to the x. And minus 0, because it's this minus this. Right, because it's this times this minus this times this. So w2, I'm going to write it again and put it in a box, e to the negative x. And again, after class, you're totally encouraged to take pictures of my notes. I have full solutions to all of the homework. I worked out all of these. And they're so long, that's why I never threw them away. In my Calc 1 class, I just throw away the homework. I just, you know, I don't keep it, <laughs> or I can do a limit. But this, I didn't, you know, it's just so long. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, just throw it all away. When I used to study when I was in school, I would do problems fast. Like I would train for speed, and I would throw them away. Like I would just write, I would work out derivatives and just crumble them up and throw them in the corner of the room and just, you know, speed. Like, yeah, it's really obsessive, right? It's like, build a pyre at like the end of, of Oh, that's so good. Yeah, like burn them all. Oh, yeah. That's a great idea. Okay, so W1, W2, I have a fire pit. So yeah, okay, I built it. I'm not doing it in front of my house. So, so we're here. Now we got to compute the U's, right? So U1 and U2. So U2. It's a band. I used to always say that. And then I think that people didn't know that what it was, so I stopped saying it. Oh, wow, that's sad. Yeah. I haven't listened to you 2 in a long time. So. I should listen to that on the way home, maybe. Um, so W1 over W. So let's see. W1 is this. Huh. So we're dividing by W. Maybe I shouldn't. So we're dividing by W, so we're multiplying by the reciprocal. So I'm going to write it like that. So this is equal to... 1 over negative e to the negative 3x times, uh, this is, I should have skipped some steps here, but I didn't, because I'm weak. You're welcome. Whoever said that? Uh, John D. Oh, oh, who was it? Oh, oh, good, Nick. Yeah, you're welcome. So that's a D. So I didn't, I didn't skip any steps. Basically, uh, we're dividing by this. I wrote it like this. Yeah, it's probably better that I didn't. Yeah. So now I don't mess up either. The negative. So so we're dividing by this. So I'm multiplying by the reciprocal. Yeah, so, that's cool. Yeah, you see it. So negative and negative is positive. This thing comes upstairs, and when it does, you add the exponents. So you get three x plus negative two x. So don't send the other one downstairs. So you can just keep it up, but you gotta get rid of the negative. Yep. Wow, that's horrible. Hardcore. So I, there I skipped some steps. So what happened there? Magic. So I'll do it up here. So, so basically it became negative e to the 3x times negative e to the negative 2x over 7 plus e to the x. And then these cancel, they become positive, and then you add the exponents, and that gives you, that gives you e to the x. Would this be good for u sub? Yeah, this is good for u sub. Yeah. Let's do it. I'll show the work. If you don't show the work on this, I'll assume you can do it in your head because you're a pro um, for this one, not for the other one. The other one's too hard. Um, so, so, so seven. Most humans can't do the other one in their heads. I can't. Well, now I can maybe, but it's because I know the other one. The, the U2. U2 is really hard. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, you'll see. It's ridiculous. Yeah, they, they go pretty hard. They yeah. Hard <laughs> I remember U2 when I was a little kid. The guys, those guys, I was like, like this big, and I was, U2 was around. So e to the x dx, that's our du. I mean, U2's been out forever. Since what? U2? No, U2's been out since like the 80s. Yeah, you know. yeah Bono's like 100 years they, old. They no. made <laughs> they made an album that they just gave up to everyone. On iTunes. Oh, really? And I hated that so the much. Was, you couldn't delete it. Yeah. And it automatically yeah. downloaded it into That's how I And so it was just memory YouTube. that you couldn't use. Talk about advertising. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, it takes up your memory on your it phone? Free for yeah. I, I, still have it. I couldn't afford that memory loss. Oh, wow. Don't worry about the plus C, okay? That's funny. That's funny. I don't have an iPhone. I need to get a new phone. Um, you can drop the absolute value here because it, it's positive already. Don't worry about the plus C. Why not? Yeah, because remember, you're going to multiply it by y1. It gets absorbed into the other constants and stuff. 
Yeah, I don't have an iPhone. I've never had. I don't have, I've never had any Apple products. I'm thinking about getting one. So, I'm thinking about joining the dark side. Heard razors making smartphones flips. Cool. I've never heard of that. So there's our U1. All right, now we got to find U what? Two. two. U2. Two. So U2. So it'll be W2 over W. Now I'm thinking about phones. DX. So W2 is, where is it? Oh my god, here it is. Here's W2. Right, so it's this divided by W. So I'll, I'll, I'll write it the same way as I did last time. So 1 over negative e to the negative 3x times e to the negative x over 7 plus e to the x dx. So it's, so it's that. So it's 1 over that. Same thing, right? So I'm going to come over here so you can see it better. So you two, this comes up, and this is going to basically give us negative e to the 2x, right? Is that right? Because you add it, and then 7 plus e to the x. This is the hardest integral in the homework, I think. There's other hard ones. I mean, like, oh my god, you said this, this, I mean, it's, it's DE. Like, there's no holding back. I mean, there's no tricks up. So that's good. <laughs> so that, that's not there. there. There's a couple ways to do this. You could just make like a U sub. You could let U equal the bottom piece and like reverse engineer it. That's okay. I don't think it's as elegant. I'm gonna show you another way to do it. What, what, what is it? Take out the U to the 2x. Almost, take out, yeah, you know that's the right approach. I was like, oh, Matthew, you know. Um, pull out the E to the X. So I'm gonna do the scratch work down here without the integral sign. So watch this. Basically, you do this. You write it like this. Let me pause here. See what we did? Same thing, right? e to the x times e to the x is e to the 2x. And then you say, okay, it would be really nice if it was e to the x plus 7. So what do you do? Well, you just put it there because you can do whatever you want as long as you fix it later. It's really beautiful. We do this a lot, especially in the third test. We'll be doing some, uh, some more integrals like this. Um, so everyone sees it's the same thing. And then these cancel. Uh, 1 minus 7 over, what a great marker. This must be a different marker because it's like rejuvenated. No, well, if you lick it, then it comes back. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah. Oh, when I was a little kid, yeah, it shocks you. When I was a little kid, I got shocked with the thing there, the, the, the outlet. So, so we're good now. So now you distribute this. Ah, what's that going to become? A positive. Good, Renee. 7 e to the x. What for what? The negative 7 over 7. Yeah, because you multiply through by the negative x. So, see, that's negative and negative is positive. Can you go over it again? This? Yeah, since you got it out of the... This? Yeah. Yeah, let me do it again. Can I do it again? Erase it? So, oh, it's too late. Okay. So basically, <laughs> so, so you do this, and you do this, like this. It's the same thing. And you say, okay, I want to I wanna simplify this, so what do I do here? So I'm going to add a 7, and then take away a 7. But then you just don't... You, so it's... But you, you take it away over here. Put it in a separate... Yeah. Oh, my God. That's, oh. It's beautiful, right? It's like if you have x over x plus 2, you say, ah, I don't want to use long division, I don't want to use synthetic division, and I don't want to use u sub, so I'm going to be lazy and just do this. We're still just simplifying, right? Yeah, we're still just simplifying. You haven't got a yet. Same strategy. Same strategy. Really powerful stuff. It's like dark magic. Okay, so, so now we're going to integrate this thing. Um, and we can do these integrals pretty easily. This is going to be integral negative e to the x dx um, plus this one. So plus, I'm going to leave the 7 in. I'm not even going to do the u sub for this one. I'm just going to show you how to do it mentally. So this first one, when you have e to a number times x, you just divide by the number. So like it's e to the negative x divided by negative 1. You can do that in math. So this will be e to the negative x because we're dividing by negative 1. 
And in this one, it's what uh, Urash was saying earlier. It's like a U sub. In fact, we did it over here, didn't we? Same thing. So this is going to be plus 7 ln, and we can drop the absolute value because 7 plus e to the x is positive. So that is u2, and I'm going to cheat. I'm going to put the u2 here and squeeze it in like that. Beautiful. So this integral here, uh, has this, this problem has been on test before, and people have gotten stuck on this, on this part. Like there's been semesters where like I don't do this one in class, but because it's on the old test, so I'm like, oh, go over the old test. And then I put it on the test, it's like <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it takes a lot of time to go through these to go through this question on your own. It takes, you know, considerable amount of time. Any questions so far on this problem? I know, I know the time, right? <laughs> All right, now we got to find yp. We got to be careful. Okay, so I'm gonna come back to this board. So yp, I know, I know, right? I know. We're just getting started. No, that was the worst part. But there's a tricky part at the end of this problem. But before we go further, though, let me just pause because I see people still writing. So I'll wait. I'll wait. What's this? I'll read this while you all write. <laughs> hmm? Brand yeah, brand new pamphlets. Oh, I know her. Yeah, that's Michelle. She's the president of the math club. Yeah. Ah, I feel important. I know someone on the pamphlet. Like it's. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions on any of the steps? Please ask. This is it, you know? Like, this one? This? Oh! 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 Thank you, Sarani. Oh my god. Oh, I feel so bad. Sarani, oh. Yes, so, so it's gone. Yes. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Sarani. Sarani. Wow. Thank you. I'm glad I paused. That's a bad mistake. We would have gotten to the end. You would have typed it in. It would have been like, oh, it's wrong. <laughs> like, yeah. I know, right? Just Thank you. I know. Just start all over. Yeah, no, yeah. Thank you, Sarani. <laughs> so worth it. Like, that was like the most worthy point of the day. <laughs> so. Huh? I think you all have got like eight total. Yeah. How many do you have from last time? Do you know, like six, seven, eight? Okay, I'll probably just give them to the whole class. Is that okay? Can I just make them all like like entire class points? Yeah, that's what I did last time. Like Rafael had the most last time. I'm like, ah, eh, I'm just gonna share it. So. Um. <laughs> I have a bunch of names written down. Everyone okay with this? I messed up here. I'm sorry. So that that that's, I just, yeah. Okay, let's find YP now. So yp, we gotta be careful, yp is u1 y1 plus u2 y2. Okay, yp is u1 y1, u2 y2. Well, we, we have all that Yeah, it's ridiculous, right? So, so u1 is here, it's this. So it'll be, yeah, we have all that stuff, we do, yes, yes. So it's ln, well, I can come down here, so it's, so it's ln, 7 plus e to the x, and then y1 is here, e to the negative x. Be really careful at the end, like there's still some work to do, and when you think you're done, you're not, uh, you'll see, you'll see what happens in this problem. Uh, and then u2 is way over here, that's the one I had messed up, negative e to the x plus the 7, so um, plus negative e to the x, plus 7, ln 7 plus e to the x. Wow, ridiculous. And then y2 is e to the negative 2x. Thank you, yep. Let's keep going. Let's distribute it, okay? On your test, it will say, yeah. Did you mess it up again? Did I mess it up again? God. It's okay, no, it's good. It's good. I did it on purpose, Renee, to help you. Uh -huh. So, because, you know, I care. You. Uh, you're welcome. I'm glad you caught it. No, I did it on purpose. No, I didn't. I would never mess up on purpose. I'm not one of those people, no. <laughs> it's got to be real. Ah, uh, all right, let's distribute. You can't distribute that. Right? So, so I'm just going to put that in the front, okay? So, there you go. 
Wow. This times this, so you're gonna add the exponents here. So it'll be negative, oh, here it is, e to the what? Negative. Negative x, there it is, there it is. That one, that one's right, because you add, right, x plus negative 2x. Yes, I know, right? Uh, plus 7 e to the negative 2x, ln 7 plus e to the x. So there is uh, yp. And you may say, oh, now you just add it to yc. Yeah, but we won't be done after that. There's still another step. So on your test, it, it will, nope, but it will say simplify, and it will be in bold. It will say simplify as much as possible, if possible. So you'll see what I mean. It's a really, it's a really key step. It's coming up. Is this problem also separated by parts of the test? No, it just says solve. Where does it say simplify? At the beginning of the question. Oh. I'll say it in bold. I'll put it in bold. <laughs> yeah. I'll, it'll say solve using variation of parameters. Simplify if possible. It'll say it in bold. I know. <laughs> Finally. Why? <laughs> Equals yc plus yp. So that means that. Y equals C1 E to the negative X plus C2 E to the negative 2X plus E to the negative X ln 7 plus E to the X. I'm talking like a phone, like those phone voices. Minus E to the negative X. Huh? Who would rather do this this way than what we were doing before? Oh, I know, right? But sometimes you can't do it the other way. Right? In this case, we, had, we couldn't do it with the other method. Right? The other method only works for E sine and cosine. Here we had a fraction with an E. Remember, it was 1 over 7. Yeah, we had no choice. Yeah, this is like not something you would prefer to do. So that is not the final answer. No, we're not done. Yeah, simplify it. So, so here's the thing. So you see some common terms here. You see this. And this, they're the same. So I'm going to do it over here. Check this out. If you have c1 e to the negative x minus e to the negative x, what could you factor out here? E to the negative x. Yep. This is a really important technique. C1 minus 1. C1 is arbitrary. You don't know what it is. It could be any number. You're subtracting 1, so you still don't know what it is. So you just call it something else. We've already used c2, so you just call it c3. So you don't have to show this work. I just wanted to show it to you so you see how to do it. But because they're the same, so you just, you just do this. So say, hey, you know, I'm going to take these two. I'm going to call that C3. So C3, e to the negative x, plus, and then and that's it. You can't do anything else. Plus C2, e to the negative 2x, plus e to the negative x, ln 7, plus e to the x, plus 7, e to the negative 2x, ln 7 plus e to the x. And that would be the final answer to the problem. <clears throat> so, so th is this going to happen on the test? Not necessarily. I don't know. I haven't made the test yet. It doesn't always happen, but it happens sometimes. Okay, so it only happens when you have stuff like this. Here, I'll give you, I'll give you another example. Say you had Say so you had this, c1 e to the x plus c2 e to the, e to the 3, 2x plus 4 e to the x plus 5 e to the 2x. Say so you had this. In this case, you can take these and call it c3 e to the x. And then you can take these and call it what? Explosives. <laughs> I was waiting for it. C4. C4 e to the 2x. Yeah, it's a explosive movie. It's <laughs> so dumb. <laughs> so easy to the 2x. <laughs> right, so you can go. So I, I should use a different symbol. So use the, bo bo the box one to become the bomb. And <laughs> get the bomb in a classroom. And then these become. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so, do you, wait, so what's in the big box is not what we need? No, this is the answer. This is the answer. I'm just, I'm just, show, I'm just showing you, like, what if it was this? So what if it was something else? If it was this, so, yeah, 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 from nowhere. From over there. <laughs> Don't you get it? No, no. So you know, if it was this, <laughs> yeah. So like if we had another problem, yeah, but this is the final answer.
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <It's> like, oh. <laughs> what about the sine function? No, there's no sine. <laughs> sine x. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we have 12 minutes. You want to like talk about the test at least? At least talk about it. Yeah, let's just talk. Yeah, it's just, I mean, I'm going to pull this. I'm going to turn this off. 